Hello everybody and welcome to video two in the Python expert tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about dunder slash magic methods and the Python data model. Now this is very important. This is something that I guarantee you've seen before, but you probably just haven't understood what it actually was or why it was working the way that it did. And this is actually going to give you a great insight into the way that a lot of things in Python actually operate because until you see this, you kind of just take them for granted. So what I want to do is give you a very basic example of two objects in Python um, just kind of being used and interacting together. Then I'm going to show you how we can create the same thing with our own Python objects and even modify existing Python objects to implement uh, implementations or operations that we want. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to just make two uh, variables here. I'm just going to make a list and say one, two, three. And I'll make another list that just says, you know, four or five like that. Now we know that with lists, we can add them together by using the plus sign, right? We know that that's fine, that we're allowed to do that. So let's actually have a look at how that looks. We get that list and it adds them together. Now, why does that work? We don't really know. We kind of just assume that that's a feature in Python that we can add lists together, right? And that's totally fine for our intermediate kind of understanding. So what about length, right? I can get the length of a list that works fine too. So if I look here, I get a length of three and there's all kinds of things that I can do on a list. Like I can index something on a list. I can put, you know, X one and that gives me some value here. And you're like, well, why are you showing me all this stuff? Because you're going to see that this kind of syntax that we're using right here on this object, because this list is actually an object and I'll prove it to you just by printing the type of it and telling you that is actually a part of a class. You can see class list is implemented under the hood. Now, you might not understand what I mean by that right now, but I'm actually going to import inspect and show you and then we'll get into a little bit deeper of this understanding. So what I'm going to do is actually just say print inspect dot get source of list. Now list, this is going to be ridiculous when we look at this in the terminal. Uh, list is a built-in class. Oh, it won't let me uh, look at the source of the built-in class. Okay, that's fine. We don't need to look at it for now. Um, but anyways, the whole point of this is that these objects here, this is an object, this list is, they're both objects. We take for granted the fact that we can perform certain operations on these objects using some special Python syntax, right? Like even being able to multiply lists together, like I can do X multiplies by three, right? That's kind of a special syntax. Why is it that we're able to do that? Well, that's because this operation is implemented on the list object itself, and it tells the list object how to behave such that it sees a multiplication sign right after it or such that it sees a plus sign or it sees this index or it sees a call. We implement that functionality and because we can do that, we can implement that on our own objects. Now let's do one more example. So obviously we saw when we printed out the value of this, right? We printed out X. Um, we just printed like it just looked exactly like this. It printed one, two, three, right? Or in fact, actually, let me show you. If I do a space here and I just print X, Let's have a look at what we get here. We can see that this gets uniformly spaced, even though there wasn't a space here. So it's not the fact that it's just printing out exactly what this looks like. There is something under the hood that's telling Python what this list object looks like and what to print when we decide to print it out. So let's create our own object now, actually. So I'm just going to say class person like this and let's just define an init method now this is actually a double underscore method or a dunder method or magic method whatever you'd like to call it we'll talk about how this one works in a little bit although i'm sure you guys understand so we'll just make our object uh, person i'm going to say p equals person like this make an instance give it a name of say tim and then if we print the value of p well if we were you know if we looked at the list before and we saw that the list printed one, two, three, four, just printed exactly what it looked like, we would assume that when we print P, it should just print person Tim, right? It should print this. Well, when we look at it, it doesn't do that. And I'm sure you've seen this before. It prints the memory address location. Now, the reason it does that is because we have not told person what to do when we try to print it. It does not know what, the, what we should show. So by default, it shows the information that it thinks would be valuable, which is simply just its memory address location, right? That's it's like representation internally in the Python program. So how can we change this? Well, we can implement what we call a dunder method or a magic method, which is called wrapper. Now I'm sure you've seen this before, but essentially what wrapper does is allows us to define the string representation of an object um, from inside of it. So what I'm going to do is make an F string and I'm simply going to say person and then in here, self.name. 
So now when we decide to print this out, what we get is person Tim and I'll just do it one more time instead of getting that crappy, you know, just gibberish of memory address location. So this is the first thing that we can do is we can implement methods such as this on our own objects um, to implement some kind of functionality. Now let's show a few others and why this is so powerful. So there's actually a whole list of what we call dunder methods. And this is what's part of the Python data model. And some people call these just data model methods. And essentially, um, you guys can read through this if you want. I'll leave the link in the description. Someone remind me if I forget, if we scroll down to the bottom here, we'll start to see that there's all kinds of these double underscore methods that we can actually implement on our own objects. And obviously, I'm not going to go through all of them because there's just so many to kind of talk about. Uh, but let's keep going down here. So for example, new, init, del, Repper, right? We have this one here. String, bytes, format, uh, LT, LE, EQ, NE, GT, GE. We'll talk about what all those are. Hash, uh, bool, right? Get attribute, set attribute, dir, del attribute, multiplication. There's all these kind of things that we can do. So what I'm going to do is actually do a weird one and I'm going to uh, implement the multiplication double underscore method. So what this tells Python to do actually um, is what happens when we use a multiplication operation on objects of this type, on objects of type person. So what I'm actually going to do in mole here, I'm going to assume actually X is going to be some integer. And what I'm going to do is just take the person's name and multiply it by whatever the integer is. And that's the operation we'll implement when we use the star or the asterisk on the person object. So what I mean by this is I'm just simply going to say self dot name equals self dot name times X. And I'll even do a little just um, thing up here. I'll say if uh, type X is not int, then we'll simply just throw an exception. So we'll say raise exception. We'll just say invalid argument must be int uh, or in. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't really matter what we put there, but that, that's fine. Okay. So we'll say P equals person. Now what I'm going to do is simply print P. Uh, I won't print that actually. We'll just say P times four, and then we'll print P and let's have a look at what this gives us. Okay. Person, Tim, 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 right? So we can actually implement whatever functionality we want using this upper level Python syntax by implementing some kind of lower level dunder method. And that's what the whole point of this video was to do was to show you that everything that we use in Python, all of these different symbols can be implemented on a lower level on our own objects. And these again are like data model uh, methods, right? So we can create objects such that we can add them. We can multiply them. We can have representations. We can do a call on them. We can do all kinds of crazy things. For example, let's do define underscore underscore call. Let's just do self. Let's take some argument. Why not? Why? And let's just print this value. So what I'm going to do is now instead of printing P, I'm just going to do P and put value four in there. And now let's watch what happens. So if I go like this, we get the value four printing out. We could even change this call this function, right? Four. So what happens is we can implement the fact that these two brackets, what these two brackets do if they are on an object, which is really cool. It allows us to make objects that are much more usable, much more readable, and just almost seem like they fit in with the standard Python documentation because I don't need to necessarily call a method. I could actually just put the brackets. Now, anything you can think of with this kind of syntax, you can probably implement. For example, define underscore underscore len underscore underscore self return the len of self dot name. Maybe that's how long a person is, unless you're going to ask for their height or something like that. Then what we could do is print the len of P, right? So if we go like this, we get three as that's the name. So that's kind of the idea behind these dunder methods and these data model methods. The whole point is everything that's above, even something like division, you know, greater than or equal to. Um, less than whatever it is equals index. All of these things can be implemented. And if you want to see the implementation details of how all of these work, then you can read through this data model um, documentation because there is a ton of them. The whole point is you don't need to memorize these. You just need to know that they exist. And then you can think about, for example, if I have a class and I want to implement some kind of functionality, maybe I have a polynomial class. I want to add them or multiply them together. Then rather than having to make my own method called dot multiply, what I can do is simply implement the mole. Um, double underscore method, and then that will allow me to use a star on it. Now notice you're going to want to make these types safe because obviously I multiplied by an integer, but you could technically multiply two people together. Um, you can do all kinds of things such as that.
Okay, so now I'm just going to show you something interesting. This is just maybe to kind of enlighten you a bit or to show you something that we could actually do in theory. So what I'm going to do is import, or actually let me say from Q import Q and import inspect. Now what I'm going to do is just make a Q object. So I'm just going to say Q equals Q. If you don't know Q, it's just a built-in data structure in Python, works as a Q, pretty straightforward, and print Q. Okay, so I just want to print Q to just show you that Q does not actually implement a wrapper method. So let's just do this. Um, and you can see that we're getting some random, you know, kind of memory address printing out to the screen. So if I wanted to actually see why this wasn't giving me that representation, I could have a look into Q itself. So I could say print inspect uh, dot get source like that. And then I could print my just Q object like this or not Q object, sorry, Q class, have a look at the source code. And we'll see that if we scroll through it here, we don't have any dunder methods that are implementing any functionality. So let's say you want to make your own Q class that worked very similar to the Python Q class, but you wanted to do things like allow the plus sign, or you wanted to do things like allow the minus sign. Well, what you could do is you could say from Q import Q as Q like that, then you could say your own class class Q is extends from Q. And then you can implement your own Dunder methods so that you could override this. So for example, define underscore underscore wrapper like this. And then what I want to do is maybe I want to show a Q, but I want to say how many elements are in the Q. Well, then in that case, what I would do is return Q. And then I would say Q. And then I guess in this case, going to be self dot underscore Q length or Q size, something like that. Now, now what I do if I create a Q, I say, uh, you know, Q U equals Q like so. And I decide to print out Q U like that. So let's have a look. And we can see we get Q with zero items. Now, the reason I knew to use Q size is because I read through the source code and I saw that Q size returns a length of self dot Q. And I see here we have self dot Q equals DQ. Uh, what else do we have? All these other things. So this Q actually just implements a DQ object. Uh, where's the init? It's right here. It you can read through. You can understand how this works. So if you wanted to actually add something to the Q, right, using maybe the plus sign and you didn't want to implement something else, then what I could do is say define underscore underscore add underscore underscore self um, item like that. And then what I would simply do here is okay, let's add that to the queue. So we'll say self dot put and then item. So now if I want to add something to my queue, I can say queue plus plus nine, and it doesn't even need to be equals, I can literally just do plus nine. And if we come here, and we run this, now we have an object queue with length one, right? And I could keep doing this, I could do queue you plus seven, right, like that. And then if I wanted to, I could literally implement a negative sign. So I could say Q U minus, we have to put something here. But if I want, then I'd say define underscore underscore sub underscore underscore self item. And then all I could do is say, so let's just say self dot get like that. And that's all we need to do. So now if we run this, we should see Q as length one. And even though I mean, I don't like I just put a minus sign like this. Actually, I'm curious if this will even work. Um, Q minus invalid syntax. So I could do like Q minus none if I wanted to. Uh, and then that still will remove that item for me. So this is the idea, right? These dunder methods allow you to implement these kind of syntax things as higher level syntax. And this is what's called again, the data model in Python. This is how all these different objects work. And these dunder methods can be very useful. There's a lot of different ones. I'm not going to go through all of them. But the whole point is that you understand that each one of these kind of unique pieces of syntax in the higher level of Python maps to a lower level dunder method that implements that input implements that operation, right? So that's the way that this works. So yeah, so hopefully that kind of cleared things up on dunder methods and magic methods. They're really not that complicated. They're very useful. And when you're creating classes where these operations make a lot of sense to do like adding, subtracting, multiplying, especially working with numeric values, being able to avoid having to create your own methods like define, add, x, y, and being able to just implement the dunder method add and use the plus sign can make things a lot more intuitive um, and just easier to read in your programs. So anyways, that has been it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on dunder methods, magic methods, and the Python data model. As always, if there's anything you'd like to see in the future videos, please do leave a comment down below, like subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.